Okay. You good? Okay. So we were uh, discussing last week. We began the sugya of uh, of gambling of asmachta, and the uh, the as we pointed out, the Mishnah listed it amongst the other uh, the other uh, the other categories that are that are puzzled pashtas according to most Rishonim in Rabbanon, and that's why these are the only categories that are listed in this Mishnah. Although there are definitely some other obvious categories that would invalidate you, like a gazlan minatora person who outright steals would be possible, but the Mishnah does not enumerate that in this list because we're only, according to most Rishonim, listing examples of cases that are only Midir Abonan. So the Gemara wants to clarify when it comes to just a little background so we just uh, know where we're holding. When the Gemara wants to clarify, Mesachi Bukubiyah, so the Badaram of Chavdalim and Be'ez, Mesachi Bukubiyah is one who plays with dice. So the Gemara asks, Maika Ovid, the Badaram of Chavdalim and Be'ez. The reason why this person is puzzled is because it's a smachta and a smachta is lokanya. Oh, I'm sorry. So tonight's, uh, tonight's Chabura is Le'ina Nishmas Meshulam Ben David Ben Svi by the Barish family. The uh, words of the Reitera should have uh, be an alias Nishmaso from Meshulam Ben Svi. Thank you for reminding me. Um, so again, so we're uh, we're learning Mesach So the, the Gemara wants to know what the problem is with a person gambling with Mesach So the Gemara says, "My Kavid, I'm Rabbi Yechabra, Mishum Dahava Asmachta, Asmachta Lo Kanya." So there's something problematic with the person's state of mind when he gambles. He only has das of an Asmachta, and he doesn't have full fledged das and uh, willingness to relinquish the ownership of his assets or his money that he's gambling, and he's obviously not letting go of his money, and therefore it's a chashash of gzela that will ultimately come out of this game of gambling. V'asmachta lo kanya, and asmachta does not create a kinyan. Fundamentally, v'asmachta lo kanya, so you're in the parsha of gzela. If you're in the parsha of gzela, one has to know, and the, the question that arises is, so then why aren't you an outright gazlan that would be pasal minat Torah, why are you enumerated in a Mishnah that's only listing psulim that are Dirabanan? Gazlan is not listed in the Mishnah. So we suggested two suggestions why potentially that could be. Either because you need a classic Maisek Zela, I need to walk over to your property, grab your hat away. That's Dumya Devayigzol Sachonis that I do, an outright grabbing of something that's not mine. That's a classic Zela. If you're playing dice, you're playing a game, people are saying, okay, they're signing on the dotted line. That's not an outright lekicha, taking something against someone's will, that you would say that that's classic gezel menatayra. So that could be, although fundamentally, halachically, there is something missing in this equation. There is no das, but we can't call that a gazel menatayra to invalidate you on a level of daraisa. Or Taisvis has a fascinating chiddush that we mentioned already a few times. Taisvis says that, no, you're violating an Isidore Rice, and this is Gezel Menat So then what? It's not assumed to be such a bad thing. If it's not assumed to be such a bad thing, people don't approach this situation of gambling to be Gezel. We look at people's psychology when it comes to Psule Edus. And to give you a Chaloy Shame, a, a, a nickname of being, uh, you know, to, be, to have now the, uh, the, to be placed in a category of being an invalid aid, you have to be something that's perceived by society to be considered Gezel, and that would be, that would not invalidate you on a level of Daraisa. Two, two suggestions. But according to the first uh, Gemara, the language of the Gemara, it is very possible that Rabbi Bar Chama, because fundamentally it's based on Asmachta, and Asmachta lo Kanya, so he held that it actually was Gezel, perhaps even on a level of Daraisa. Rav Sheshes Amar, but Rav Sheshes disagreed. Rav Sheshes Amar, Kol Ki Ay Gavna Lava Asmachta. No, no, no. All of this is not Asmachta. I. So if it's not Asmachta, so why are you puzzle? So the Gemara says, rather you're puzzle for an entirely different reason. What's the reason? Lefisha Ein Asukin. Be Yeshuva Shal Olam. Rather, it's because this person is involved in gambling. A person, the type of person that's involved in gambling constantly, is a person that's not involved in daily activities, in daily business, doesn't understand the ways of the world, and therefore he doesn't have Ne'emonus, he doesn't have the ability to give Adis. Now, if it's because he doesn't understand business, 
or some Rishonim say because he's not trustworthy or because he doesn't understand the tircha of what it means to, to put in a hard, hard-earned work in a job. There are different approaches amongst the Rishonim. Maybe we'll get to it. That's really a, a question that, uh, that we discussed last week. As, uh, as Abe pointed out, that the Gemara says, my nafkamina, What's the, what's the practical implication between Rav Sheshis and Rami Bar Chama? The practical implication is, what if a guy has another job? If a guy has another job and he just goes down on the weekends to gamble a little bit, would he be puzzle edis? According to Rami Bar Chama, he would be puzzle edis because he's violating Gezel. That's still Gzela. Whenever he does it, it's considered Gezel. So he's puzzle edis from the few times that he did it. Whether he does it 50 times or he does it twice on the weekends, it doesn't matter. But if you hold no, it's Lefisha Eni Sukhav Yeshuva Shalom, it's because he's not part of the regular daily business activity. He doesn't have a job. So then the second he has another job, so then obviously he would be, he would be accepted. Um, fine. So let's just get back before we get to the question that Abe mentioned before. So let's just get back to, uh, to, uh, to, the, to what we, we, we discussed last week. So we need to explain according to Rav Sheshis why this isn't a smachta. And that's what we worked hard last week to understand, to go through all the different sugyas of Asmachta, to understand why we're concluding according to Rav Sheshis that this wasn't an issue of Asmachta. So we had the opinion of Rashi. Rashi explains at the bottom of Chodal and Mabez, I'm just going to summarize right now. Rashi says the reason why this is not Asmachta, as opposed to other cases in Shastat that there, that is Asmachta, is for the following reason. Rashi says when it comes to rolling die, Rashi says that that's totally not under your control. And if it's totally not under your control, a person admits that and is aware of that before he rolls the dice. So if that's the case, so Rashi says that a person has smichas das. He knows that the odds are against me. He knows that, that uh, most of the time uh, the, guy, uh, the guy loses to the dealer. So if a guy loses to the dealer, so then uh, he relinquished his money. He knew going in there that chances are he's going to lose this money anyways. So therefore, gomorumakne. He had smichas das, and it's not a problem, according to Rav Sheshes, of asmachta lo kanya. That's Rashi's analysis in our entire sugya. The problem is Rashi is not so simple. Because the Gemara, as Rabbeinu Tam points out in the beginning of this long tosos, Rabbeinu Tam says the Gemara seems to challenge that, that very approach. The Gemara actually, Rabbeinu Tam points out, says the exact opposite of Rashi's conclusion. According to Rashi's suggestion, when something is more out of your control, it makes it more <laughs> permitted. It makes it more permissible. It makes it more that I'm relinquishing on my money. I know the odds are against me, and I have no control of this, and whatever happens, happens. But if something's totally in my control, so then that's a situation where I'm banking on my own power, my own capabilities, my own, my own, my own success, and therefore I'm not banking on what I, what I made a tanai or what I made a stipulation. And, uh, and, I, and I was totally uh, not uh, serious when I made that, when I made that deal, and I smacked the lokanya. So what's the case? The case in the Gemara Mbam The Gemara Mbam says that a person is, uh, is taking a job, and he's willing to, uh, to uh, sell wine on your behalf. I'm going to sell wine, I'm going to go to the marketplace, and I'm going to sell the wine. And the Gemara says... Why the Gemara says that should be a smachta? Why is it? Why, the Gemara says why isn't that a smachta? Why isn't it the same as what? Um, the Gemara says that that is a smachta. So Gemara says why isn't that the same as a situation where I agreed to plow your field, and I said if I don't plow while you're away, then I promise you I'll pay you the best crops that I caused you to lose. So Gemara says, if you say that Ashalim b'meitva, that I'll pay you the best crops, that's not a smachta. But if I say to you what? Listen carefully to the cases. You got to get all the cases down. But if I say to you, if I don't plow, then I'm going to pay you alpha zuzi. I say like $100,000, $1,000, whatever it is. I say an exorbitant amount that I'm going to pay you more than the amount of the field. So then the Gemara says, that is a smachta. So again, so the Gemara is saying... Why is it that if I tell you I'm going to sell wine, I'm going to buy, sell the wine for you, and then I now, I now was mechai of myself, if I don't, I'm going to pay you money. That's different than the situation where I say, if I'm not going to plow, I'm going to pay you the best of the crops. What's the difference? So the Gemara says the difference is very simple. Gemara says when it comes to plowing, it's in my control. 
I can plow. So what I was mechayev myself is, is something that I know is in my control or is not my control. And that's not a smachta. Yet when it comes to selling the wine, I don't know if there are going to be customers there. So the Gemara says, when it's out of my control, it is a smachta. So Rabbi Nutam says, I just brought you a Gemara Bamatia that said the exact reverse of what Rashi says. The more something's in my control, the less the smachta it is. The less something's in my control, the more a smachta it is. So therefore, the Rabbi Nutam says Rashi is absolutely wrong from that Gemara, and therefore there's a totally different explanation in our Gemara of why gambling is not a smachta for the following reason. Nothing to do with what Rashi says. Rather, there's a major jackpot over here. There's a lot that stands to be gained and benefited in this situation. And I want to get a piece of that jackpot. And because I want to get that piece of that jackpot, I relinquish the ownership of my money in order to get access to that jackpot. And then the Rabbi Nutam says the similar idea when a person sets up shiduchim, for his sons, and he has stipulates certain certain hischaivas, certain obligations, since he wants them to be happy and there's what to gain for the shidduch to go well. So therefore, Gomer a person is, has smichas das, and he has full-fledged uh, ratzon and, and will to uh, to give over the money that he obligated to be. So that's Rabbeinu Tam's answer. A new kimta, when there's what to gain, when there's what to benefit, person has added smichas das, it's not just a regular business deal, and therefore that's the difference in this situation. So we ended off last week's shear. So how is Rashi going to get around this Gemara Mamatsiya? The Gemara Mamatsiya seems to challenge the way Rashi presented our whole sugi that Rashi said, when it's biyado, then it is a smachta. When it's totally out of my control, like rolling dice, then it's not a smachta. So what's going on over here? So the Re says, in defense of Rashi, that was the last part of Taisis that we did, the Re says, no, 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 there are three categories. And this is what we have to explain. There are three categories. There's a situation where something is absolutely in my control. Biodo legamre. If something is biodo legamre, like what? Like plowing a field. I have the, I have the ability to plow a field. If it's biodo legamre, so then really if I say and stipulate something that's normal, that's not a smachta. So as long as I stipulate it and it was totally in my control and I didn't say something crazy, then that's not a smachta. But... Even in that Gemara, if I say, Alpha Zuze, I'm going to pay you $100,000. No. But the fact that you said something not commensurate with the activity that you're doing, so obviously you meant to, you didn't mean what you stipulated by the fact that you were Magzim. But if you went in in a normal way and you said, I'm going to pay you back for the crops, if I don't do something that's totally in my control, that's not a smachta. And Rashi will agree to that. Something which is totally out of your control, Lav Biodo Huklal, Rashi is telling you that's not a smachta either. Even if what I'm relinquishing is something that's big. I could put a lot of money on the table and be ready, willing to relinquish and lose a lot of money in betting since it's totally up to Shamayim and lav biyodo hu klal, says Taisis. That's where Rashi says, where Sheshis is telling us, misachik bakuvio is lav a smachta. That's not considered that's not considered a lack of smichas das. He knows what he's getting into and he relinquishes that money. When is it a smachta? Something like selling the wine, taking the job of selling the wine. What's that? That's partially in my control. Partially not in my control because who knows who the customers are going to be today. So it's lav biodo, it's, it's biodo vilav biodo. If it's biodo vilav biodo, even if I don't, Say a guzma, I don't exaggerate a certain amount. Even if it's for a minute amount, a little bit of amount, that's something that you can't obligate yourself because you don't know what's going to happen. That is automatic asmachta. So that is the resolution for Rashi, the three types of sugyas. So I concluded last week that if you would accept Rashi's opinion, and if you would accept Rashi's opinion, so it would really depend on what type of gambling you're involved in. Meaning, if you're doing a slot machine. So then, l'chora, there would be what to talk about. We have to fill in some of the gaps over it right now, which is going to be today's year, and hopefully we'll get a bottom line la'alacha. But according to Rashi, a slot machine is totally out of your control. It's not skill. That's totally out of your control. However, it, once you're starting to talk about fantasy football, you're starting to talk about poker, one could argue there's some skill involved. There's some uh, knowledge involved. Maybe that's lav biodo legamre. 
but it's biado a little bit, then it's 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 nishtehin nishteher. It might be that middle category that the Gemara is saying more like chamer de zolshefut, more like selling the wine. That even without an exaggeration, that would be an asmachta. I think according to Shitas Rashi, you're going to have to break down the different games, and some will be an asmachta, some will not be. Some will not be an asmachta. What about being kosher or pasul edus? So if we paskin like Rav Sheshes, so then. Your avada kashalaidis. As long as a person has another job and he's not doing this constantly, so you're going to be kashalaidis. The question is whether or not it's going to be mutter. What case did Rav Shesha say, kol ki agavna lava smachta? Perhaps it was only literally mesachik bakubya. When you're rolling the dice, that Rashi says is totally out of my control. If it's totally out of my control, like slot machines, so then Rav Shesha says that a person relinquishes his money, that a person knows that he has the chances to lose, and therefore he knew going in that he was not going to keep his money. Because that's not what the... Uh, both, cases are, both cases are dependent on other people. Selling the wine right. and, and also game. playing it and also okay. playing a game. How do you know that Masaka Bakubi is not playing against someone else? I'm saying, okay. yeah. Um, fine. So now, in a situation, by the way, and according to Rabbi Tam, everything's mutter. According to Rabbeinu Tam, even poker l'chor would be mutter. Because we're not going to now distinguish between biyado, biyado mixes, biyado garment. No, there's a pot. And I want to gain from that pot. There's a benefit. So that would be a tremendous kula based on Rabbeinu Tam. Oh, so we'll have to see who we pass him like la oh. But now, before we get to it, this is a very important caveat. Comes along Tysis and comes along with a psak halacha at the end. So I basically just summarized the entire long Tysis. And comes along Taisus in three lines from the end and says as follows. You see where the test is? The test of the Maser Sashas. Mushum Hachi. Pasak. The re Paskin, based on this analysis. The Mesachi Bakuvia Koshal Edis. Mesachi Bakuvia is Koshal Edis because we don't Paskin like Rami Barchama. The Paskin and Krabi Yehuda le Kaman, the Kaven Shiesh lo Umnus Shaloihu, since he has another job, kosher, he's kosher. Behold the Paskin and Misachi, the Misachi Kani, one second, that which I'm saying, Misachi Bekuvia is Kaina, which again, according to Rashi, means Dafka, a situation where it's Lav Biodo Klal, it's totally based on the luck of the draw, the luck of the roll, right? Dafka, listen up. And this was, this was what we needed to clarify from the first year. Dafka, kishemos shneim al pi hadaf. Shehadaf v'hamokom konui lo'oisei sheyarviach k'dei liknois hamos asher olov. Aval ha-mesachkim ba'amone. Afilu hikna loy mahani im loy hikna bebezdin chosher. So this is what's misinterpreted from Taisus often. Everyone says when they learn the sugya mesach bekuvia, what do you mean? The money is put on the table. Why shouldn't that be mutter? Again, then we're ignoring the entire shear that we just explained. Back up for a second. What is a smachta that's kona? What is ko- what is lava smachta? Kolki agav na lava smachta. That we have to analyze based on a stira between Sanhedrin, Bab three different sugyas, three different conclusions, Rabbi Nutam's conclusion, Rashi's three different categories. We have to first figure out what is a situation where a person is willing to relinquish his money. So according to Rashi, that translates to mean what? It means a situation with rolling the die that's totally out of your control, totally, it's totally based on luck. Oh! Now it's based on luck, says Tysus. Listen, it's only in a situation that we can rely on that based on luck that a person is Gomer Makne if what? If the most, the money is on the table. Okay? Like blackjack. 
that the tokens are there. We know what we're playing for. We see it in front of us, and it's right there. But if you're mesachik ba'amono, which means what? Adi, if I, if I win, you'll pay me. If you win, you'll pay We make a bet. We make a bet. We don't put anything on the table. Nothing. There's no ca- I didn't even take out my wallet. We just say, I'm going to do this. You're going to do this. Even according to Rashi's opinion, even if it's Laviyadu Oklal, even if it's Mesachik Bekubya, there's no Kenyan. Because how are you coning my money? So says Taisis, you need another, a second caveat, a second Nakuda. You have to have the ability that what? Kishemo Shneim Al Piadaf. Why? Lefi Shadaf. Listen to what he's saying. Because we assume the table that we're playing on, Fi Shadaf Vamokom. The assumption of us playing is that this is as if, listen to this, it's as if it's a chotzer, that whoever wins, it's going to be his chotzer. Okay? Yeah, Eitan. Not to give it up for like good choice, like a best football or like any other uh, Yeah. Like, again, if the money's up front versus, oh, it's after the game results, I'll pay you. Oh. Oh, so this is so 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 that so that's a catch. So I'm not convinced because I think fantasy football has skill. When you make your team together, you say I I need a defense over there and off. I, I'm sorry if I'm quoting the wrong, whatever. A <laughs> linebacker over here and I need a. Just one defense. What? Just one defense. Defense. Okay, whatever. But I I have a I have a I have I have a strategy. I have a strategy. So that's not La Viado Cloud. That's not Rashi's example of rolling a die. So fantasy football, yeah, I'm not sure. According to Rabinu Tom, maybe you would have a cool I think according to Ra- let's say let let's say let's say let's say we have a gambling with a dice. A dice. Betting on the Super Bowl. I don't know. You have to so you tell me. When I when you bet on the Super Bowl, are you mamish are you mamish betting based on luck, or you or you really feel like when I match up these guys and I see the way they play against each other, so it's a no brainer that uh, no, face Dallas no, is gonna they win. Create, they create the numbers, meaning they create some type of uh, spread. What? When is Dallas bet, in it? No, no, no. They, they compensate for the worst oh. team. So that you bet. Oh, oh, you get money for... for so you're saying, let's say I'm betting on... So you're saying if you bet for the underdog, it should be mutter. No, 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 because it, they already compensate for that. So it's... They make it, they make it as if it's even. Yeah. So it's luck. It's luck. Unless... But one really second, one second. But they, they want the same amount of betting on both sides. Yes. So it becomes a... Point it incentive. Yeah, but is it actual... When a person... I'm asking the psychology of a person that's betting. Does he honestly... If you would choose, you would choose for the for the underdog or for the or for the. It, there's not it's not really an underdog, but the, I mean, you know, they just add. So and economy, the if the number moves so that if, if they say if they expect it to be a five point game, so that's that's. Oh, you're betting on the spread. on the on the spread. The spread oh, 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 yeah. So that spread. right. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spread. Yeah. yeah. So you're making a selection based on your knowledge. So you have strategy. There is a strategy. There right. Is, you know, right. Well, yes. Would you compare it? But, but it's better than rolling a dice. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, no. You might convince yourself it's more than exactly. It's not. Person it's makes it even. Right. Believe me, yeah. Vegas makes it even. I could hear that. I could hear that. That Vegas being mother. I could hear that. Otherwise, someone. Would so then, so then, if it's luck of the draw, so corner again. But again, it has to be mol saladah. You nothing start. The dice doesn't start rolling for the head there. No pun intended. Doesn't matter. That's amona. I trust you, but I, it, but I, but it, but I, but there's no Kenyan. So now the kasha, it, yeah, what? It's a friendly way to me. If you and I sit, go, okay, I bet they're going to win, they're going to win. After the game, winner pays money versus you're paying online, you're doing, you're betting at Vegas where in advance in order to get a ticket. So it, it, those two different things. So we bet. So when you people. bet online, did you yeah, give you your credit card? My credit card before, yeah, right? yeah, it's most right. of the. Versus you and I, whatever, you yeah, whatever, you yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah that's for sure. That's for sure, officer. Yeah, for sure. Also. Yeah, that's that's you don't even have a head there, Rashi. Yeah. Uh, again, assuming that we're assuming that it's yeah. luck of the no, assuming that it's all, all right, right, right. it's all luck of the draw. Yeah, correct. Let's say if you had have a chves, uh, a, a, a a bet of uh, of rolling the die, similar to rolling the die, then cash before would make him mutter. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. All these fantasy footballs, 
you know, they never collect money beforehand. They just, this guy's, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, I got you. Uh, I got you. Okay. Okay. So, well, we didn't get into Moscone yet, but according to Rashi, I don't know, fantasy football might be more skill, but you might have something to work with when it comes to the Super Bowl. But let's get to the Moscone. But before we get to the Moscone, yeah, Itai. It's okay if Marv this week is 10.30, yeah, we're okay, yeah. <laughs> Spe- speculative commodities, things like that. I mean, you don't know. I mean, it's not like you're buying something that you're owning physically. No, no, I, I don't. this is what Adi asked last week. <laughs> when you're purchasing when you're purchasing an item, you're not, that's not a smachta. Uh, but you're purchasing what might come out to an item later on. It's not that you're buying. No, but that, like, that, that there's a asset, mark, there's an asset, asset right now. That, it's 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 a, a, yeah. It's you yeah, can say yeah, that's correct. Correct. yeah, 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 yeah. Still stocks, yeah. purchasing yeah. stocks. Okay, now, the Ktsais HaKhoshin doesn't understand the end of this taste. What do you mean you put it on the table and therefore it's Kanui to the one that's going to be Marviach? A Chotzer HaShutfin, a property that is owned by both of us, cannot be Kone L'Shutfin. If it's not my property over your property and it's a shared ownership of this area, so that doesn't have the capacity to be Kona, be Kenyan Chatzar. If you want me to be Kona from you and we're Shutfin, you have to put it in my private property. And if you want, if I want you to be Kona, I have to put it in your personal backyard. But if we both own this area and it's a Chatzar or a Shutfin, so how can that Kenyan work? So that's the Tzai Sachoshin. He's a Tzarech Ian on our Tzai He doesn't understand what mulls, what the money on the table actually helps if we both have a shared ownership and it's Kona to both of us for whoever who wins it. So that's the Ksos's problem. How does this work in Hilchus Kenyanim? But some of the Nosei, one second, so some of the Nosei Kalim explained Taisis that it wasn't working out trying to be Kaina. It's just working out adding to the Gemira's Das, meaning based on what Eitan was asking before. If a person is just betting and it's Baal Peh, you know, we all say, we all say, uh, we all say, I'm going to pay this, I'm going to pay that, and no, no money is on the table. So again, that's going to affect my smichas das. You know, I don't look at this as a reality or I can get out of this afterwards and I'm not going to actually pay up what I need to pay up. But if the money's on the table, so some of the posts can say, that's what Tysus is saying. I'll accept Rashi's interpretation. When I knew that it was luck of the draw and it was totally up, and up to Shamayim and it was totally mazel and I had no idea what was going to happen. Plus, the money was on the table. That is going to create such gemir as das that it's going to add to the das. So it's two ways to understand Tysus. The first way, the way the Ktos is understanding Tysus know is that you only work through half of the Kenyan over here. We work, every Kenyan needs das and Kenyan also needs Maisa Kenyan. So the Ktos was saying, the Tysus was saying that you also need the Maisa Kenyan. What's the Maisa Kenyan? It's Kona through my Chatzar. So the Ktos says, how does that work? This Chatzar is to both of them. So come along some achrenim and they answer for the ktsayis. No, you misunderstood ktsayis. There's no ma'isa kinyan at all over here. This is working through das legamre, all only das. Just, we don't have enough das over here. Just the fact that something's totally out of control, that's not going to create enough of the smichas das. So therefore, the ktsayis wanted to add that it has to also be mo saladaf, that a person now has full-fledged gmiras das, he solidified his knowledge, and he knows that he's going to relinquish because he sees the money present on the table, and therefore he's going to get into this arrangement. Yeah. I hear, I hear. If it's uh, so, you want to know, right? It it depends on if, it depends on right. I hear that. It, yeah. If you if you view the issue with smichas das based on the way I presented it, which is that maybe he's going to get out of it, so then I agree with you completely. But what if a person suggests that no, psychologically having the money present in front of you that might add to your smichas das, and then one could argue. I, it, would be, it would be open to question how you understand within the svara of tais, is not like the tais, that mol saladaf is to create smichas das, a gemiras das. What is the cause of that gemiras das? Is it because it's just money that's present, so therefore that solidifies your knowledge, or it's because accountability, and that there's an achrayis response, you know that he's going to be apt to pay up. If it's not if it's not miyuchud to you, yeah, it's to both of you. It could work for both of you, so that's that's tantamount to a chutzar ashutfin. In hilchos nazikin, that's not going to work for hilchos kinyana. Yeah, yeah. Fine. 
So, uh, fine. So that is the opinion of Rashi and the opinion of Taisus and potentially a cool as follows. So we're going to, we're going to really get to a fascinating distinction, Halach Lamaisa, that starts as follows. If you look at the sheets in front of you, there's a little bit of a problem. And the problem starts with the Rambam in, uh, in, in, in Hilchus Gzela. I don't have it on the top. It's the one that's like cut off on the top. It's wide. The Rambam is here is discussing different cases of Gzela. Second last line. Person who plays with animals. What's that word? Call something behemto. Call shiratza behemto. Otaritz yoser. Whoever's going to win the race, right? You're betting on horses. I don't know. Shnetzer behemto. Otaritz yoser, right? Yikach mechavero kach vekach. He's going to take from his friend the money. He's betting on horses. So what's the Raman Paskin? The Ram is Paskining what? A smachta, it sounds like a smachta, lo kanya, and it's an Isser Gzela. So if I would ask you right now, why are you possible Edus? Because a smachta lo kanya, and you're a Gazel, right? Turn to Hilchos Edus. Switch Svarim in the Rambam, even though it doesn't feel like that because we just switched the page. And say for Shaiftim Hilchos Edus, Parakid Aleph. The Rambam holds, I'm sorry, not Perak Yud Aleph, Perak Yud, top line, V'chena Mesachet B'Kobya, V'hushu lo tiya lo umnas elahi, Hol ve'inu yisig v'yishu v'shalala, Ma'reza v'cheska sh'leich l'mena kubya, Shu ava gezel. Ma'ar v'rabbi say, we have a blatant steer in the Rambam. This is the Kasha of the Magi Mishnah, the Kasha of the Keset Mishnah. The Rambam in Hilchus Eidus seems to say that the Isser, that the Psul Eidus of a person that gambles is because he doesn't have another job. Namely, if he has another job, there is absolutely no problem with gambling, and it is not an issue of gezel. Because if that would be the issue, that would be that should be the reason why he's possible. So the Ran is the first one of the Rishonim, I believe, that points this out in Sanhedrin on our daf, and the Ran points out that there is a Gemara that we're forgetting about. This Gemara, just to save time, we're going to just skip in the Ran. You see where it says 122? The Gemara in the 23rd, 23rd, 24th, I think the last parak of Mesech Shabbos. Parak Shoel, Adam, Gabe Mastisin, Demaphis, Adam, Imbanav. A person could appease his children. And the Gemara talks about doing a little game, a lottery with his children. Right? So it says the Gemara, listen to this. But davar zeafilu v'chol aser. Why? Mishum kubya. Person should not play these lottery games with his children. Why? Even if it's not Shabbos, the Gemara was talking about a case of Shabbos business, and the Gemara says no. Even in the weekday, this is a problem. Why? Because it's kubya. V'shamina mehal tarti. You see from here two things. Chada de bekubya ike iser derabanan afilu didon the kaimul and the time of the masis and mishum enu sukub yeshuv shalaylam. So you see, says the Ran, even if you hold like Rav Sheshes, that the reason why your Pasala Edus is not because of a Smachta, but it's rather because any Sukhub Yeshuv Shalolam, we assumed up until now that what that would mean is what? That it's Mutter. That it's not only an Afkamino Legabe Psul Edus, Eitam Blumen asked this Kasha last week. What, what, what are we asking? What's our discussion about? Is our discussion about whether you're puzzle or not puzzle? Or is discussion whether it's mutter or asr? So I assumed up until now, what? That it's discussion that if you hold like Rav Sheshis, and since you're not puzzle, so then it's not going to be a problem because asmachta, this is kolki agavna lava smachta. The Rambam says the Ran, I, I didn't, it's on the other side of the page, I didn't copy it for you. The Ran says, based on the Gemara Mesecha Shabbos, no matter how you slice it, bein l'rami barchama, bein l'rav sheishes, there is an iser of gezel when it comes to Masachi b'kuvya. And I'll prove it to you, Rabbi Yisai. Look at the hagos hagra in the aleph on Sanhedrin chavdalat amibes. 
when the Gemara says Rav Sheshis disagrees with Rav Barachama, Kol ki I gav the lava smachta. Look at the gra and Aleph, right under that goes to the Bach, on the side of your Gemara. Says the gra v'nira be'enai harambam loy garosla. The Rambam never had this girsa. I mean, the Rambam held both according to Rav Sheshis and according to Rami Barchama, it is a smachta. And a smachta lokanya. But what? Rav Sheshis held that wasn't enough of a reason to passel you for Edus. So now, when it comes to Hilchus Edus, the Rambam's going to pass into you that it's only because you don't have another job. And you're not involved in this type of society. And if you have another job, you're kosher. Whether or not this is mutter or oser, the Ramam holds, it's for sure at least, it schmecks gezel. For sure at least it relates to gezel. For sure it's oser. That wasn't even a discussion on the table. Says the Ram, I'll prove it to you. There's a Gemara on Kuf Mem Tess and Shabbos that says, Bechol, Kubiyo is oser. So gambling was never a, an option to be mutter according to the Rambam. And that's why the Rambam writes in Ilchus Gzela, it's going to be also Medivrayim. You want to ask why it's kosher or posle edus? That is a debate between Rabbi Barcham and Rav Sheshis. But whether or not it's mutter or also the Rambam held, but def, definitely it's, it's also. And it all stems from what, says the Vilna Gon, stems from a girsa in our Gemara. Did you have the girsa of kol ki agavna lava smach? Now again, let's chazer. If you hold like Rashi, if you hold like Rabbi Tam, everything that we presented up until now, so they have a girsa of kolki agav na lava smachta. If you have a girsa of kolki agav na lava smachta and you play by the rules of what is a smachta because it's, it's lav biyado klal or whatever rules we presented, then you might have a heter of certain cases of gambling. According to the Rambam, all of our heterim just went by the wayside. All gambling is absolutely usher. And I'm going to tell you something fascinating right now. If a svarti asks me in any of these questions, whether or not it's mutter, there's nothing to discuss. Absolutely usher. Machaber says it's gezel. Or at least avak gezel. He doesn't have that girsa in the Gemara. It's not even an option. You want to discuss why your puzzle aid is? That we could talk about. But that's, a, that's not going to be a long conversation. You know? I want to talk tachlis. Why? Whether it's mutter or usher, that's it. Ad kedei kach in Yabia Omer. Rabavadia has a tshuva. I looked up this tshuva today. Rabavadia has a tshuva. I didn't know when ad kedei kach. Rabavadia holds it's usher for a svarity to buy a lottery ticket. Unbelievable. Now, Rabavadia, I think, is talking about a lottery ticket in Eretz Yisrael. Because there, the, all the money is, is Jews. There is a heter in Simen Shin Ayin that the Mechaber has a heter of being Mesachi Bakuvia, even according to the Mechaber who holds it, it Shmech's Gezel, even according to Rav Sheshis, when it comes to casinos, when it comes to Goyesha money. Now, why that should be is a very good question. The, all the Nosek Elam asks, I understand, if it's Gezel, Gezel comes Osir. So the answer to that question is, as the, the post can point out, is that it's not, like we started off this year, it's not classic gezel. We're not outright stealing something and taking it away from another person. But it relates to gezel. So on such a gzera, they didn't make a gzera legabe, legabe akum as well to say, to say that that isidur abon would apply and the Gemara and Shabbos would apply. They didn't establish it. But when it comes to Jews, it comes to a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket from Jews it would be, it would be, it would be also. Now, whether or not for tztakas, the Mordechai has a heter when it comes to tztakas, there might be room to be makel. But unbelievable. Ad kedekach, Ravadia writes, it's usher. And he ends the tshuva and he says, I think the Rashkanazim should really listen to me also. That's what he ends the tshuva. That's what he writes. But the Ramah writes the heterim of Rashi, the heterim of the Ri, the heterim of, of, of the different, 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 where the Ramah and Simon Reish Zion lists all the different heterim. There's what to work with not a lot to work with, Rabbi Yisai. A lot of these games are really not going to be mutter, even according to Ashkenazim, when it's going to be skill-based and when it's going to be, you're going to have still those problems of Asmach to Lokanya. But to get a heter off the ground, we're going to have to what? Not have the gears of the Rambam. How are you going to deal with the Gemara and Shabbos? So, some, so the Ran wants to say, Rashi and Rabbi Tam will have to say that the Gemara and Shabbos was where what? Where it's not Mo Saladaf. Where it wasn't put on the table. So maybe that's the way you'll get it. That's when Kubiyo is Osir. Because you didn't play by the rules of when Kubiyo would be Mutter. But according to Rashi, again, you want to have Rashi's Heter, it has to be a situation where what? It's not skill-based. It's not based on his, his abilities. It's not based on strategy. And what? The Mosar al-Adaf. Then one could talk about certain cases that would be Mutter. 
Whether or not it's advisable, uh, one could talk about hashkafically and in terms of getting involved into addictions, that's for another schmooze. That's not for the Sanhedrin Shi right now. But, uh, you know, but, but even just a heter, that would be according to Rashi. According to the Ramam, according to Svardim, there's nothing to talk about. It's absolutely prohibited. Ad kadei kach, the Rebavadi, even Aser, based on this Rambam, that it would be Aser even, even uh, to, buy, to buy a lottery ticket when you're dealing with Jewish money. The question is, we have to explain at the end of the day, Rabbi Yisai, but I don't understand. If it's Gezel, it's Gezel. If, if Rav Sheshis agrees, like the Ramam's Pshat, that it's a smachta, and a smachta is Gezel, so why aren't you puzzle this for that reason? Why do you have to come on to this reason of Lefisha'eni suko b'yishu v'shalol? So there's a fascinating Urim v'tumim. This is Rabbi Yonis and Ibish at Sefer and Cheshen Mishpa. He says a razzle-dazzle Pshat. Unbelievable shot. If you remember, we suggested in the first Rashi, the Turi Evan and Rosh Hashanah asked Akasha and Rashi. Rashi sounded like that you need a situation where Rashi says, well, where was this Rashi? Hamasachi Bakuvya. Rashi says, Kula Mefarish Bumara. The Kula Me'en Gazlanim Hinva. Toira Amra Al Tashas Rasha Aid, Al Tashas Rasha Aid. Rashi said, you need something me'en gzela. So we asked the kasha, if you remember, just in the little time that we have left, Rashi said over here, you needed something like a, ge- a gazla. Why? We said a person who violates a lab sheish malkus alone is, is going to be possible. You don't need a rasha mach maschimud mamon. So we suggested that perhaps Rashi shita is, which is the opinion of the Ramah, that perhaps for psulim de Rabbanon, it's not enough to just violate an iser. And even if that, it, it, rather for psulim de Rabbanon, you, because it's not a psul de Araisa, you need a psul that is machmas chemdas mamon, that is based on a desire of money, and it wouldn't be the same halacha criteria as a psul de Araisa that we pass in la'alacha, like we said, that when the Gemara says that if a mummer is oichel nevelis, even if it's not oichel nevelis l'teyavon, abai holds, we pass like abai, mummer oichel nevelis lahachis is also possible edus. Like we said over there, the Machlech is Abayi and Rava. So we said, perhaps when it comes to Psulim de Rabbanon, a lav would not be sufficient, but rather you need a lav de Chamas, you need something that's based on a desire, desiring of money, Dumya de Gzela, that's what Rashi was alluding to over here to answer the Turi Evans Kasha. So says the, tur- the Tumim, perhaps that's the Pshat and the Ramam as well. What does he say? He says, perhaps because we're talking about Psulim de Rabbanon over here, perhaps the sheet of the Ramam is, that what? That when it comes to a psul of Mesachi Bakubya, it has to be something based on a chemdas momon. What's based on a chemdas momon? Says the Tumim. So if you're stam playing Mesachi Bakubya and you have another job, so I get my parnosa from the other job. I don't have such a heavy desire to win. I don't have a chemdas momon, so it wouldn't work. So says the Ramam, it's not sufficient to possibly you lay this only in a situation where ain't lo omnes elohu, because now it's going to be machmas a chemdas momon that I need to win in order to pay my bills, in order to survive. This pshat of the Tumim is very, very difficult because the Ramam says beferish. Even when it comes to Yisurim, the Rabban, and the Ram talks about a person who's mechal yontav sheni. There's no chemdas mom in there. You didn't iser the rabbon, and the ram says your pasul aedis. So you see, beferish in shita saram that you don't need chemdas mom. And whether or not our pshat might be true in some rishonim, like we pointed out, it's not true in the shita saram apparently that you need chemdas mom. So therefore, it wouldn't work in the ram. So then we're back to square one. If that's the case, so according to the ram, if he agrees that everyone over here, when you gamble. Any type of gambling, according to the Ram, is off the books. Why? Because it's Gezel. So why can't that alone be the reason, according to Rav Shesh, is why you're Pasul Edis? So you have to say that it's a lower level Gzela, meaning it's not the same, same type of, like we started off with. Even if Chazal say it's still Usr, and a person shouldn't do this, and it's still Usr the Rabbanon, but to now call this a Maisa Gezel, that now you're going to be Pasul the Rabbanon, that far, Chazal didn't see in the, in the involvement of Mesach Bakubya enough to invalidate you. And that's why the Ramam says, I can still hold that technically it's Usr, even though the only thing that's going to passle me is a real bona fide Maisa Gezel, or if I don't have any other job, and that's why if I have another job, I'm going to be kosher. Just finally, because I want to move on in the sugya, to get back to Abe's question. So there is a sma in your papers. Abe asked the question, if the issue is because a guy doesn't have a job, so you're going to have many other people 
that don't know the way of the world, that don't understand business, that potentially could be uh, very problematic. So I saw the Sanhedrin Ketana in the Sefer HaMesech Sanhedrin. He asked this kasha. If you're really basing it on a person not knowing about the way of the, the commerce, so you can have a lot of people that are just, uh, that, are, that even if they're not Mesech Bukubya, that should be invalid even without playing if it's based on Sheker. So then we understand that a person's not trustworthy. So it's just a fascinating Sma. I'm going to say it outside. The Sma discusses this issue of having another job. Is the pshat that now that you have another job, so we're not concerned because you have parnosa from elsewhere? Or is the pshat that once you have another job, so now, no, you understand what it means to work for a living. You understand what it means to work for a hard earned money. To understand you, you have a little bit of a psychology of what it means to be made for dine mamas. What's the nafkamina? Says the, says, the, uh, says the sma, what if a person, you know, uh, lives off his shver? So he lives off his shver, right? So I don't technically have another job. So, right, this is a great Mara Malcolm Sma. I don't technically have another job, right? But at the same time, I don't need this edus for the money. So do you say his puzzle or do you say his kasha? He thinks it's the machloik is Ramam and Rashi. Or what happens if I do have another job? But guess what? It doesn't make ends meet. I'm making minimum wage. So therefore, my job is not paying off all my bills. So if you say it's because I need the money and I'm, and I'm hungry for money, having another job is not necessarily going to help me until everything is taken care of, all of my bills. But if you say, no, I have another job. I understand what it means to be honest. I understand what it means to be truthful. I understand what it means to work. So then the fact that I'm registered for a job, even though it's minimum wage, will help me and will make me kosher. But, but uh, the, the kosher that Abe asked, the Sanhedrin Tana asked, but... Any sugi yeshu shalom, so I, I could have many, uh, you know, starka talmidei chachom that I could pass over edus because they don't understand all these, uh, all these situations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Shkayach. <laughs>